Hi everybody and welcome back to another Tech Tip Tuesday. Today we're going to talk about clarinet adjustments and the three main clarinet adjustments that every director needs to know. So let's get right into it today. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out on the chat, uh, just on the Zoom link and ask any questions you want and we'll get to those uh, as soon as I can. All right guys, the number one rep um, the number one instrument uh, that we see problems with is a clarinet. And the reason being is there's so many of them out there. The good news is they're really easy to fix. The three main adjustments we worry about is the, this little screw that sticks up on top of the G-sharp key that every kid is out there that says, Man, this is like the red button, I gotta push this thing, what's this big screw out there for? And they take a screwdriver to it and start messing around with it. And all of a sudden their clarinet doesn't work. So this is the easiest one to fix. Let's show you how. Wrong one. So this is the screw I'm worried about, right up here on the top of the G-sharp key. And when it's screwed down too tight, what happens is the, the key here is the G-sharp is open over top of the A. What we want is I want a little bit of room in the A to wiggle. But do you see as soon as I start moving, I'm going to roll this around so you can see that a little bit better. As soon as I start pushing the A, the G-sharp takes off. There's no movement in it at all. So if I use my feeler gauge, and if you don't have a feeler gauge, you need one. I've got a video out on YouTube on how to make one of these guys. We drop this feeler gauge in underneath the G-sharp, and there is nothing here. I can actually spin this thing completely across. There's no, te no touching at all. So that's why this doesn't work, because the G-sharp is always open. So what you do is you take your screwdriver, you drop it inside of this little screw right there, if I can find it. And we just back this off a little bit, and what I want is I want a little bit of movement in the A before the G-sharp takes off. I don't have it yet. Move it up just a little bit further. There we go. Now if you watch this, I can move the A. No, maybe I can't. Nope, I still want to go a little bit further. That was really tight. There we go. So now if you see this, I can wiggle that A a little bit before the G-sharp takes off. And that's what I want. And now if I come back with my feeler gauge, I'm going to drop the feeler gauge in here, and now I've got some tension on that pad. So I'm going to check make sure I can feel the tension pulling on all sides of that pad, which I can. Check your A as well, making sure it's down where I want. And that is all there is to that adjustment. Now you guys, if you ever want to see this in greater detail, I have a video on YouTube called Clarinet G-Sharp A Adjustment. It covers just that exact same, that exact topic. Um, so if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, go to Utah, YouTube and check in Repair Master. <laughs> Let's try that again. Go to YouTube and try RepairMasterclass.com and subscribe to the channel. There's a lot of content that I put out there, including these Tech Tip Tuesdays. So if you happen to miss one, no big deal. It's always out there on YouTube uh, for you to be able to, to see the information. All right, guys. The second adjustment we're worried about is the bridge key adjustment. So it's what puts the two joints together, allows these two keys... Um, to actually connect. And so when we've got our clarinet together, we're worried about that bridge key. And that bridge key that we're worried about is right there. You see it moving in underneath there? That's the one I'm worried about right there. And what it does is it makes sure that this pad here, on the first pad on the bottom joint, and this pad here, just above the ring, between the rings on the top joint, actually close at the same time. Now, when we look at this adjustment back here, you've got two parts of this. You've got the part that's on the top joint, and you've got the part that's on the bottom joint. Guys, don't ever worry about the one on the bottom joint. You don't, it's just, let's simplify this as much as possible. All I'm worried about is this lever up here on the top joint. And what I do is I come in with my pliers, my flat nose pliers. You notice how these don't have any teeth in them at all, so it doesn't mark up the key. I wanna come in and grab a hold of this guy right here, see that, grab a hold of that top one and move it appropriately. So if, if the top joint is hitting first, I'm going to bend this thing up to give me a little bit of time. All right. Now, what happens if you can't remember which direction to move it? Just bend it. Guys, one of my emergency repair tips is just bend it. What you're going to notice is, did it get better or worse? If it got worse, guess what? Go the other direction. It's not that you did it the wrong direction, you just found out. Now you need to, you know you need to go the other direction. So just grab a hold of that key and bend it back the other way. 
and see if it makes it better. If it does get better, but we're still not quite there, keep going, right? It's that simple. Just don't be afraid of it. Grab a hold of the key and bend some metal. It's just metal. It'll move, don't worry. So once we have that um, moved, we're gonna come back in and check our adjustment again. I'm gonna feel here. I'm gonna come up and feel here. And this is still a little light for me here, so I'm gonna bend this one down. So I'm gonna come in with this. And because the top joint is light, so this the bottom joint is hitting before the top joint is, I'm gonna twist it back down and check it again. And that about does it. So that's as easy as it is. So, so often um, players will come in and say, I can play everything in the top joint, but I can't get anything going in the bottom joint. I immediately know what's going on. It's this bridge adjustment. If it doesn't play into the bottom joint, it's this bridge adjustment. That key just got bent. And how does it get bent? The thing is out there in a long ways. And either when we're putting it together, we've hit the keys and bent it. Or when I'm sticking it back in the case, it gets bent. It's no big deal. Just grab a pair of pliers and bend it back. All right. The third adjustment I'm worried about is down here on these big four spatulas that I use on the bottom joint of the clarinet. And I'm specifically worried about this one here. So out of, out of these guys, the top here has what's called the crow's foot. So if we look at this lever here, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. If we look at this lever here, underneath that, you've got this weird looking foot that touches both this spatula and this spatula here. And it's that foot that I'm worried about. What is happening is when I push down here, it moves both of these pads together. So again, I go back to my feeler gauge, slide my feeler gauge in underneath there. And I've got some tension there. And if it's loose on this one, I know I need to move this foot. No big deal. Grab your pliers, come back in uh, and grab a hold of this foot and then just twist. All I'm worried about, you can, you can do two things. You can twist up and down this direction. So if I take this foot and bend it this way or this way, I'm going to make adjustments on this lever. But I'm also going to make adjustments on this lever. Now the worst thing that's going to happen is I'm going to be able to, this spatula is going to move a little bit before this one does. And it's not the end of the world. It's, it's not, yeah, it's not the end of the world. Um, your clarinet will still play just fine. It just won't play, as, it won't feel as good. But instead, what I want to do is I want to bend it this direction. I actually want to bend that foot up or down. So I grab a hold right in the middle and I put a little bit of flex in that. Notice I didn't have to go very far. Come back and I test these out. I test this guy, test this one. And now what I've got is this one is, this one is hitting way before this one. So I'm simply going to grab a hold of that. That's my feeler gauge rolls around and bend it back down just a little bit. Again, notice it's not, I'm not flexing this a long ways. This isn't ginormous, huge movements. Oh, now see, I actually, re I overdid it even with that. Bumping cameras and everything here today. Feel that. And now I've got equal tension between both of these keys. Pants. I'm going to go just a hair more. You can see how small of an adjustment that is, just that bump. So you can make these play a lot better, especially on like your bis B and stuff like that. Come on, get in there. I see we went just a bit too far. There we go. That's the balanced action that I'm looking for in this. You guys, the clarinet really is that simple of an instrument. Every other pad on the instrument is an in, I'm losing my tools and they're rolling around here. Every other instrument, every other pad on this instrument is an independent pad. So each one works by itself. The only three adjustments on the clarinet that are working in tandem are your G sharp A, your bridge key, and down here on the crow's foot down on these low E flat Ds. So if we can get those three adjustments put together, then your instrument's gonna work so much better. 
And those are the three primary uh, repairs need to be done on a clarinet. So you guys, if you want to learn anything more about what uh, Repair Masterclass has to offer, come on over to, over to the website at repairmasterclass.com. Today I've been talking to several teachers about live stream classes. How do we come in and teach your entire school district certain repairs, like how do I do the three main adjustments on a clarinet or the 10 emergency repair tips. There are a lot of course topic suggestions for you uh, down in this section, both in band and orchestra instruments. We also have our premier course, which is our hands-on class, and that's coming up here pretty quick, guys. It's coming up April 4th through 6th for the band and 7th through 9th for the orchestra. So be sure to come over to repairmasterclass.com and check out all the information on that. If you guys ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to me through the website or through YouTube uh, or on Instagram at repairmasterclass.com and ask me your questions. I'd be happy to go through them. If you want to join me for a live session like this, you can come with your instruments. I'll put my topic aside and we'll talk about whatever it is that you want to talk about. That way you can get yourself and your students back on stage. Guys, we'll see you next week.